fun. Yo, what's going on, everyone? Brian and Jim here with Drink Your Beer and Play a Game, and welcome to another episode of the Power Hour. Hi, I'm Jim. Thank you for joining us tonight. <laughs> you know, I won't even be too mad at you, Jim. You, 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 you were a good little boy. You, you, you. You actually, you actually got our beer for tonight. <laughs> Patronizing son of a bitch. <laughs> you know, you, you did big boy stuff. You know what? Good uh, job. And I'll let you, I'll even let you do your little bit. Why don't you not take a sip until we talk about the beer? Couldn't wait, Bri. Couldn't wait. Because tonight we are drinking the Raspberry Pancake. It is pancake-inspired India Pale Ale, brewed with oats, vanilla, lactose, maple syrup, and raspberries. Dry hopped with Calypso, Lemon Drop, and Galaxy. It comes in at 7.4% alcohol by volume. Doesn't give any IBUs. And, uh, yeah, I have no bit to read. Can you give me a story? Wah! But, yeah, this comes to us from the Free Will Brewery out of Peddler's Village, PA. So that's about a half hour's drive from where we live. And they always come up with some interesting stuff. And I had this before, and I thought this would be good for an episode. Yeah. Now, Free Will, always, they have unique flavors with a lot of stuff. Don't get me wrong. They're solid, just basic line of IPAs, double IPAs, and porter, everything. Great. But I, I do love the random flavors they'll throw at you. So, um, yeah, very prep. Very good job, Tim. <sighs> <laughs> so, we will get started, as we always do, with our... Lovely Patreons, and thank you before Jim reads the questions. Always appreciate your support. If any of you want to support us, Jim. You can find us at patreon.com slash drink a beer and play a game, where for as little as $1, you can get Twitter shoutouts from us. You can get early access to exclusive content or timed exclusive. And for as little as $2, you can contribute to the Power Hour with questions for every single one we record. And as the tier goes up, you can say, I don't know, pick a game for us to review, pick a bracket for us to make a bracket out of when we bring those back, when we find a site that actually works with it. So that's still in the works. But yeah, there's a lot to it for it. And I actually have an idea for exclusive content coming up. So Jim does a truffle shuffle. I will not be doing a truffle shuffle. Every $10 patron a month, Jim will do a truffle shuffle. God make- damn it, no. <laughs> Contribute ten dollars a month. <laughs> I don't know, maybe for ten dollars a month. <laughs> Chip, come on, come on. Uh, I'm a bit of a whore. So. Come on. All right, so go ahead. You uh, you can read the question since I know you got them there, and it's from two of our favorite who seem to submit every week. So thank you guys again. They are our two two dollar patrons, and they're good boys. They wow. are. So first one comes from. Game Whisperer, our buddy Dean, who never makes it easy on us. So, even if a woodchuck could chuck wood, and even if a woodchuck would chuck wood, should a woodchuck chuck wood? What else could a woodchuck chuck if it can't chuck wood? I don't know, like poop or something? Maybe leaves? Twigs? But then wouldn't they be a poop chuck? Twig truck? (sighs) Seems like a logical question with an easy answer, Jim. I guess there isn't part of their survival boning dams, so I think the obvious answer is yes. They should be doing it. You know, if they else are the dumbest woodchucks out there. Their heads don't keep moving. You know, their body breaks down, right? I did not know that. You could I, be bullshitting me right now. I could be, but are you going to question it? I don't really care enough to. I don't care either way. Jim, think about it. I'm not thinking about this. <laughs> so thank you for that question, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> and the next question from our buddy Gamer Astral. What are your thoughts on the Polymega fiasco? So, Bri, what do you know about the Polymega besides what we talked about briefly a couple podcasts ago? Five seconds ago. Um, so, Polymega, we, we... We did talk about this in another episode. We did. No, we, we talked about Polymega. We th- actually thought it was an interesting idea, very much based on how well it works. The price points seemed a little high on some of the stuff. Yeah, for all the modules and all that. Yeah, and we're always very critical of... Since we've seen a lot of these companies come out, oh, we're going to emulate all these things, and they generally fall apart. What I will say is Polymega has been in the news a lot more and more, releasing more and more updates, actually showing some game footage. They ran quiet for almost six months. Yeah, so they've been putting in some work, and I Ooh, think they come back with a bang. They finally like start, really start showing some stuff, and 
internet does what internet does best. You got trolls, haters, whatever. Right away, start questioning. Now, I don't even want to bother showing or even saying all the people that wrote stuff. But needless to say, um, on just a very simple tweet, something that shouldn't even be like worthy of getting a lot of hate. They just wrote huge update coming next week. And they showed a 970 Evo chip. I don't know what that is. So it's obviously just part of their their motherboard. It doesn't matter. But they started getting hate, getting comments like, if it's not FGPA support, I'm not listening, yada, yada, yada. But what's amazing is Polymega, they, they, they fired they, back. They did not hold back. They obviously do not have an in-house PR guy. Yes. Because they, they went balls fighting with people. And here's the thing. When it first happened, they came off looking awful. People were, and if you just go down and down the rabbit hole, like calling people stupid, telling people they don't know what they're talking about. One of the, my favorite comments back to someone who's being particularly snarky is they wrote, personally uninter- uninterested in small ideas. It's a really good way to call someone dumb. Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of interesting to watch. It's almost like a breakdown happening or just all the frustration in the world coming out. Yeah. And then they just start slamming, what do you call it, uh, analogs, Mega SG that's coming out. Mainly for the fact that it can't do, like, you know, Sega CD and 32X, which the Polymega says it can. And at the time, here's the reason why Polymega looked bad. Because Polymega had never shown a prototype. They had never shown any gameplay footage. They hadn't shown anything. And after the plethora of Kamigo Chameleons and Atari VCSs and Way to Drink, they... They didn't really have a leg to stand on when you can just sit there and say, oh, well, it's coming. You'll know what you're talking about. So people were, have a reason to be skeptical here. So that was a really bad look. And kind of, like everyone was ready to like just write them off, basically. Yeah. So then they do an update earlier this week saying they're going to be at the Game Developers Conference and that they're going to be showing it off. So I personally thought that that meant they're going to be showing they have something on the floor. They're going to have people come up and play with it and test it, blah, blah, blah. And I thought... Before I bash this thing, I'll wait for this to happen and see how people like it. So, of course, they don't have a spot on the floor. They're in a hotel room at the conference. But they did have a working model there, and they invited people up to start playing with it. And from the clips they put on, and you it's a series of one- to two-minute clips that you'll find on Instagram or Twitter. It kind of looks cool. They showed off a couple games like... Fahrenheit on the Sega CD, Sengoku 2 on the Neo Geo CD, I believe, um, Fighters Mega Mix on the Saturn. So they were showing all these different kind of games for these different systems, and for these disc-based ones, the boot-up time was maybe like 15, sec- 15 to 20 seconds of loading before it would just start to ROM and give you the option to start it, but it seemed pretty seamless once it started. And it showed a cool thing where when you put it in... I never say it's right. I don't know if it's tape mode or tate for a shmup where Mm -hmm. it puts it sideways and then you can put the whole console into widescreen mode and then that'll completely fill up, you know, a 16 by 9 TV that's put on its side so you can flip it. So as of right now, it looks pretty cool. I don't know if I'm 100% convinced yet and it didn't show them, you know, switching out any of the modules or crap like that. But for the working model they had there, kind of cool. No, and here's the deal. <clears throat> so, color me impressed right now. They kind of did an about face, at least in my mind. I'm still not 100% sold, and I still think it's a little too expensive, but they're on a way better track than they were a week and a half ago. With Polymega, to first go back to what this was about, which is them firing back at people, <clears throat> I totally get that because I would do that. And, I, and that's the thing is, like, we don't get – if we had the number of followers of Polymega, I probably wouldn't get as deep into it. But we I actually have more followers on Twitter, so take that, Polymega. <laughs> Damn it, Jim. My point is, I can understand. You want to get back at some of these people, they've been busting their ass. Whether they've been busting their ass or not, I'm just assuming they have been. They have something to show. There's something they're proud of. And whether you like them or not, they have a team working. And for people who sit back and want to be... Just like everyone else on the internet, just criticize people who are actually doing the work. I can understand getting that anger. To Jim's point, um, you know, is it is it worth the price? That's debatable. For someone like Jim, though, who is a collector, and if you want a kind of all-in-one system that does some of the more rare emulations that are a little harder, this seems like a way to go. And, I'm, and reading through the comments as Jim just wouldn't shut the fuck up. 
I noticed the number one comment, which we see for everything when it's these type of things, is just get a Raspberry Pi for 40 bucks, And everyone would try to argue back, well, I can't put my CD or my, my cartridges in well, a Raspberry apparently, Pi. Apparently, at one point, I this this is what I heard. I didn't actually see it, so I could be talking on my ass. Probably. Probably. But apparently, um, Small I think... Small ideas. God damn it. Apparently, at one point, Analog had mentioned talking about the Pi Mega indirectly, and said, "Oh yeah, when that Pi system comes out." So yeah. they took their; they've been taking their shots here and there. And but right now, as far as clone consoles go, yeah. the analog systems are the top dog. Yeah, but but at the same time, it's like I don't know. It, it's a low hanging fruit to go after. It's if this company comes out and does what it delivers on, it's really all you can ask. If the price is shitty, then as presumably capitalism will work and they won't sell as much. But if it's a good quality system and it delivers on what it needs to, then a lot of these guys are going to be eating a big plate of dicks. Yeah. So, I mean, I think before they had their little pissing match with people online, and I get, I don't know the first thing about developing shit. So I don't know the frustration and the setbacks you're going to go through. You ain't a worker. So, yeah, you'll never understand that. (laughs) So all that aside... Maybe wait. Maybe know the audience enough to wait to have something to show before you start shooting back. Nah, I see. I'm different. I think, fuck them. Shoot, shoot back. It's a PR nightmare. Or it's like, if it comes out and you are successful, then you can give it. If you're if you're gonna fire back, you so, better so, have something to back up like with it. And like you said, it wasn't the greatest way to show it, but they clearly had something in their back pocket. So so it's either so it's either you. Well, I mean, like the Kamiko Chameleon fired back too. But that's so, that's what I'm saying. So they either you so so either you double down and be a double dick, or you shut no, people up. No, you should never. Because that's what you're doing until you have something to show. But that's what I'm saying. They clearly did. But even though that doesn't mean that people are always going to do that, they're going to do it anyway. Oh, yeah, no, when they that's don't what I'm saying. It. I'm only for people who actually have something. You should absolutely fire back. Fair enough. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I think them firing back was fine. I'm all for that. And, yeah, what I saw looks kind of cool. I personally probably won't get one, but I'm rooting for them. Something cool that's out there. Um, definitely, like I said before, I'm more impressed now than, obviously, that they had something to show. And even if it only, even if for whatever reason the, the fucking, what do you call it, the modules don't work out and it's just a CD-based emulator kind of deal, kind of like that CD thing that was supposed to come out and I don't even know if it ever did. It's still cool that we would have a CD-based one that people can just pop in and then use their things. So Okay. So. We're gonna God. Make... <laughs> I, I just saw. It'll, it'll be coming up. There's a topic. Just so you guys know, up. as we write, like, sometimes I'd like to just throw in topics. I always thought of one that was sparked prior to this podcast. So, sorry for the random interruption. We're going to move on now to uh, our only beer topic. And it's... Uh, it's a little point of pride. I'd say it's a kind of a big point of pride. It's close to home. Um, so the Brewers Association released their 2018 top breweries, and three of them actually came out of PA, which... Not, not only did three of them come out of PA, the number one came from PA. And it's funny because when we did our brackets, the number one here got a lot of shit from the real snooty fucks on Twitter. Yep. Um not that you watch, but you know who you are. And that, that's not that's not craft beer. What kind of swill is this? Because I use words like swill. <laughs> so anyway, the three that came came. <clears throat> let me try and retalk. The three that made the list were Yingling, Victory, and Trogues. So Yingling at one, Victory at eleven, and Trogues at twenty-seven. I think Trogues should have been higher. I think Trogues definitely should have been higher, and I get. I think this is a perfect representation. If you say, like, PA beers, I, of course, would have probably, over one of these, put Weyerbacher. But yeah. I know these two are more well-known. I and mean, you and I have talked multiple times. Victory's Golden Monkey alone and Trogue's Mad Elf. Like, right. those right there put them really high on the map. But Yingling, we've said it many times, and it's one of those deals. It's kind of like the Sam Adams. America's oldest brewery, Brian. Yes, exactly. And it's huge. But... They're still somehow technically considered craft. I don't care. It is a great lager. It's like it to, to us. It's 
always that easy other beer. Well, uh, maybe because we live here. Maybe if you're on like the West Coast oops, and you see Yingling. Oops. Did you start rubbing me? Yes. As I was saying, it's the other party beer. And because we're on the East Coast, you son of a bitch. Well, I had a better point. <laughs> you didn't because you were making the same goddamn point I was well, going to make. Well, I did it better. Did it first. Fuck. I win. <laughs> so uh, I didn't go through all I, – I didn't try and sit here and break it down. There is a decent amount from California. I think that beat us out. There's at least six or seven from California, which I'm not shocked. It's actually funny because a lot of the top ones are all ones that the snobs out there would not consider craft beer. So, one, so number two being Boston Beer Company, Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Um, Three, Sierra Nevada. Yep, New Belgian. Most people consider that. Yeah. Duvel, Gambrinus, which I'll be honest, I never heard of. Yeah. Uh, actually, you know what? After four, it gets into more crafty names. I was actually shocked Dogfish was 13 and not in the top 10. Yeah, considering how hot Dogfish was, like, say, 2013, 2014, like, that was yeah. the craft beer. And it's still going strong. It's just maybe it's only East Coast. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. But either way, uh, the link will be below. You can click on it. Um, it's just, yeah, the the cluster of thing is you got your West Coast, you got your Northeast, not East, just East Coast. Uh and you got a little bit sprinkled here and there, like near Chicago and Illinois. But um, I'm a little shocked. I don't know how you feel, Jim, that the only one to come out of Florida is Canarchy. Really and, surprised Cigar City wasn't in that. Yeah, that's one that like I felt thought universally people loved. like. If you went on to like Untapped or uh, Beer Advocate and stuff like that, like that's the one they all jerk off over. Yeah. So either way. So you know what that PA. means? You know what that means? The people on those pages are going to say this is a shit list. Oh, yeah. Many people will be like, this is terrible. But you know what? It's voted. It's in pay- It's on here. So And it's got a PA one at the top, so it's obviously the best list ever. Yeah. Same year Eagles won the Super Bowl. Quinky dink. Man, yeah. what a good year for us. Yeah. And, Jim, <laughs> should I also point out? What? Those same Twitter fucks who hated on our brackets – they were very Pittsburgh based. What city are all those breweries that we just named really close to, Jim? Seems like Philly. Would you say Philly breweries are better than Pittsburgh, Jim? It's actually funny. We get along better with them now, but it is funny that none of the ones on here are from. That's fine. From the Steel City. That's fine. We get, but just except- there's none. There's none on that side of the PA from here. Just know your place. This looks like there's one in Erie, but not not no uh, one. Uh, uh. Just know your place. No, no, we have we have some steel factories. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, three cities. Black and yellow, black and yellow. Cool. Yeah, it's a good song. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Just agree with me. (laughs) Just back me up, goddammit. Fuck. (laughs) So we'll put the link below. Let us know if you have any thoughts or if your state was in this. And uh, yeah, PA wins again. (laughs) Goddamn. All right. So moving on to one of our reoccurring bits, the game cover. Unfortunately, Jim left it at his house, but. I will say he did choose a pretty damn good one. The photo will be up if this is the segment. It'll be up there. Unfortunately, I won't put it up in the main clip. But, uh, Jim, I'll let you introduce it since you brought it up. Yep, so today's is going to be Abadox, the Deadly Inner War. And it's kind of an interesting game for the system because it's like the NES randomly has those games kind of like Wrath of the Black Mana where it'll try to do a whole bunch of different things. And so it'd be like shmup levels, but you know, side scrolling running gun levels, this kind of thing, this kind of thing, top down. And it just all mushes them together. And for the most part, it's pretty decent. Like it's a fun game. It's a weird game. I've only played it a little bit, but that cover just stood out to me. So So I'm gonna say right off the bat, I've never actually played this, and if I have, then it's one I just don't remember. So the majority of the game you would describe as shoot 'em up. In uh, there's shooting in some form or another, whether it's an action platform or or a shmup or this or that. So are you actually fighting, like, what I would say from this is, like, a UFO or a flying disc or monsters shooting Both. missiles? Okay. So <clears throat> what I take away from this is, and are you a guy or are you a ship in this? Actually, it's been a little while since I played it. I should have done okay. a little more research before going into this. So, so, that, so what I would take is that you are a space guy. I see – Looking at this, having not played this game, and if you're a huge NES fan, and this is a classic for you, apologize, but I would take this as like a platformer shooter. Um, 
it's interesting because he kind of has a gun similar to if you've ever seen aliens um the you know the kind of side holster gun i can't remember the name and it kills me but uh you know shooting a giant red alien creature with the googly eyes and yeah forget when i said platform it's mostly like a side scrolling shmup and then sometimes it's a vertical shmup kind of deal. okay yeah so that's kind of more what i was expecting anyway so it is a guy yeah hey, there's a guy so this monster is that monster is that even okay. though it's like a human face with googly eyes where that's just you know like a monster. slug monster looking thing so hey you know what this still manages to do a better job of displaying what's actually going on than i'll always throw it out there the mega man cover yeah, it's a guy holding a gun. <laughs> Where phalanx the yeah, exactly. He'll Billy with the banjo. I liked. I really, and I find it interesting for a space shooter. The actual the font and the title has a horror element where it's like a blood dripping underline, which would make me think, oh, is it kind of more horror? But then, like I said, as soon as you look down, it's that very typical eighties, nineties crazy like they got the grid pattern going behind the flying disc or ufo i don't even know what the fuck what, what would you call that uh, flying saucer whatever S- crash spaceship this is a this is the type of cover that if i walked by i would definitely pick it up because of the cover yeah and actually the game itself is still cheap these days but because a uh, store that we used to have around us that would you know had a decent selection and for cheap I saw this cover and I was like, I have no idea what this is, but that is a cool cover. So yeah, I'll, I'll put a fiver down on that. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I think they 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 did right with this cover. It's funny because people generally, I think that people generally shit on the cover. It's goofy and the colors are fucking. Weird. I'll I'll be honest, the guy like being this really neon green in his like red underwear i don't know why that was always a thing like the, the uh, bright ass underwear against a bodysuit i don't know i don't get it it's gotta stand out superman but, yeah yeah that's a good point um it's goofy but it's the kind of goofy i like so yeah yeah and i didn't even really put that much attention into the uh the gore on the lettering until now so nice touch i like it do you think anyone has ever though and this goes into a general thought i have about most of the games does anyone ever actually follow it up with the subtitle, The Deadly Inner War? Like, when you announce, oh, I have Abadox, The Deadly Inner War. <laughs> like, does anyone ever do that? Like, plenty of games have those. Or people that just solely say that part. Like, do people go around saying, oh, I own Diddy's Conquest? Exactly. That's my point. I would never say that. And if you do say that, I worry about you. You're, <laughs> You're a dick. <laughs> so, yeah. I could get why some people think it's goofy, um, but yeah, it's a for a friggin' eight bit retro console. So what do you expect? Yeah, not a bad choice, Jim. Yay! Still mad you fucked up. You didn't bring it. I am also mad at myself. I was so worried about bringing the games and gameplay stuff I had to bring for tonight for the actual reviews that I was like, "Oops, I forgot about this." So, all right. We're actually going to move on to our next topic. And if you have any thoughts on Abadox, the cover, let us know. We would love to hear. And if there's any covers that you recommend for us talking about, we'd be more than happy to talk. So. Yeah, please let us know whatever cover you think would be a fun discussion topic. Yeah. All right. So the next one, it's a fairly short, but uh, Nintendo has released information for a Switch about the Konami Anniversary Collections that came out. and Or that'll be coming out. That, yeah. This one got me excited, and I, Jim, I'll give you two cents for guessing which which of the collections. I are. wonder, Brian. <laughs> I wonder so much which one you would love. Jim, which one do you think it is? Well, it's the arcade one. <clears throat> so... <laughs> so it's gonna be coming out on the PS4, the Xbox, Steam, and the Switch. Say Xbox One. Never stop saying Xbox. Right, I'm a busy man. I have precious little time. Just let me just cut to the chase. Whoever says Xbox is the same type. Xbox basic schmups. Right, you're just being extra right now. Someone can say extra basic. Oh, I hope you... so much for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, you just proved me right. So Whoops. shut the fuck up. I don't. I'll be honest. I don't know which one I would be most interested. So there's going to be an arcade one, a Castlevania one, and a Contra collection. Now, here's the thing. 
They haven't shown all the games yet for the Castlevania or the the Contra ones. So, I mm, this is where I'm torn. So for Castlevania, they got one and three. They have two on the Game Boy, which I've never played. I we've talked. They're they're apparently fun. Two's a big improvement over one from what I've seen, but they're all really expensive. Yeah, Castlevania four, one of my if not my favorite. I imagine they're gonna they're not gonna go like Lords of the Shadow, you know, like the newest one. They're probably not gonna do that. So it's probably gonna. What, what are the four that you would want to see here? Do you think? I'm over sim. I don't want to say I'm over Symphony at Night. If somebody hasn't played it, you have to put that on there, and I feel like that's what they would say for last to announce. I mean, that's a, that's a big reason people bitched about the PlayStation Classic. Yeah, that wasn't on there exactly. So you kind of have to put that on there. Um, maybe one or two of the DS ones because I'm never going to own a DS. For that reason alone, I would really like to play it. Um, and they're all in the Symphony of the Night style. And I'm going to be honest, and this one's going to be very unpopular. There was that one random one on the Wii that was like a fighter. Oh, yeah, yeah. I and, never played that one. I know they're not going to put it, but because I'll never own a Wii, I that I, I know people were pissed off at that one because it wasn't the Castlevania traditional one. Yeah. I don't know if it was a great fighting game or not. But. I just like the concept. So out of, out of my own personal thing, I'd like to see that. You have to put Symphony, at least one of the DSs. Yeah, I throw another DS just so I can get my value. Yeah, say Aria Sar or whatever yeah. ones. So, yeah, I would say definitely Symphony. Um, well, I would like to see Bloodlines on there. Yeah, but and I know you're gonna argue with me, but I'm not. This is not a knock on Genesis. I, I played both. Four is just better. Um, and it's like if you're gonna have to split and try and go from generation to generation, you. I, I still think you need DS. You might even want to throw Rondo of Blood, but not the Super NES version. Right, you want to put the Turbo CD one on there. Which is that, that's one I would I would say throw, because I'm never going to own that, so. Right, and I think that might have come out on that recent two-pack with Symphony. Did it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But um, you know what I want to see on here? And the same is going to go for the Contra Collection. I want to see Castlevania Rebirth. And that was a, re- oh, a WiiWare exclusive title, which was like, a redo, like, it was like a remaster of the original Castlevania. Okay. But, like, with updated graphics and a little bit more content. But these were Wii exclusives that aren't going to be coming back, and they're actually yeah. lost in the ether that the virtual console's gone. Do you think there's any chance, I don't think there's chance, but they'll make it certain collections exclusive, like the Switch one has what you're talking about? The Xbox PS4 maybe has Lords of Shadow. Like, uh, you throw an exclusive. Yeah, that could be a thing where, yeah, like one of the Xbox titles is on there. Or, fuck, would that. <laughs> for, like, for Contra, would they put, like, Legacy of War and a PS1 on here? One of those train wreck games? Well, well, let, so, so closing up with Castlevania, I think all those are interesting ones. Maybe. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I The Rebirth is an interesting choice. I do like it. But, like you said. I don't see how you don't throw Symphony in night, or you will really piss people off. Right. Contra. So what's interesting about Contra is that it looks like they have all the ones you'd want. Yeah, but it also like they have. Well, I forget if Super Contra on the arcade and the NES is different. It's a little different. So they they cover both ends, and they have the Alien Wars, which is the best one. What else do you really need? That See, it's weird because there aren't as many really good Contra games. That's my point. So, so like I said before, I want to see Contra Rebirth on there. I'd also like to see there's that one on the PS2 that's like almost like a boss rush game. I can't remember the name of it right now, but it's one that people seem to really like. It's not a traditional Contra game, but it looks like a fun one that I've never played, so that's one I'd like to see on there. But What the, was the Contra for Sega Genesis? Hardcore. Hardcore. I'd like I, to see hardcore on there. I think they have to throw that on there. That's probably that's actually a good game. And once again, like you just said, how many more contra games? Like yeah, like I you almost you almost kind of feel like you have to put hardcore, the PS2 one, Rebirth, and then I don't know what. Yeah, that that's, you're not going to put contra for you know, maybe one of the, the Game Boy ones. Yeah, because they had some good Game Boy games. Yeah. 
Yeah, so at the end of the day, it would be interesting to see what they're going to throw. But and let's and for the arcade games, they got it all. Which, they have Haunted Castle, ooh, which is like Castlevania, that, that basically. Is, which that is, I've played it. I do like it, but I'm a Castlevania nerd, so of course I do. They got Typhoon, which I've never played. Nemesis, Nemesis, which is basically the arcade version of Gradius. Yep, Vulcan Venture, which is Gradius Two. Life Force, which is also known as Salamander. Thunder um, Cross, which I've never played. Me neither. Scramble. It's another shmup, I think. Twin B. And Twin B. Twin B's fun. Twin B's on the uh, what do you call it? The well, you don't have any or Switch Online, so you don't have is the NES. Twin B though, kind of like a 1942. No, it's. I mean, it's a vertical shmup, but it's the one where you have to like juggle bells and like keep shooting them to like get your choose the power up you get basically. Hmm. Yeah. It's a little on the cuter side. It's fun. Not interested. <clears throat> I would go River Raider 1942 over that. I mean, River Raid goes before anything, but. No, nah, it's not that great. So. <laughs> Such a <laughs> cocksucker. So, I think I think the Arcade Classics is the weakest of these. If you're a, if you're a shooter fan, you're going to love the Arcade Classics. If not, there is nothing there for you. Except for maybe the Castlevania one. I'm very, um, yeah, I mean, I'll be a sucker, uh, even though I have. And these are all digital eShop titles. That's right what now. I mean. So I, I, I'll i definitely get it for the Xbox One. I could see myself getting for a Switch, but it's only dependent on if I have. You don't, I won't have to buy the Nintendo yearly bullshit, would I? No. Okay. Then, yeah, I'll get Xbox One and maybe Switch. Maybe you get lucky with Xbox One in like two years and one of them becomes free. It'll there. become free, yeah. Yeah. So, speaking of Nintendo, we I mean, no, no, we'll, we'll hold that for later because I want to get, <laughs> I, 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 I want to get to the topic. Um, <clears throat> Jim, I got a text from Jim. It says, "I cannot wait to do the podcast," and he's all fired up. I have no fucking idea why, and he and he just sends me. You know what? I'm just gonna let Jim take away the. I, I wish I hope, preface it. I wish to God that we did this podcast on I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday when this first came out. I think it was Tuesday. Okay. So Google Stadia got announced, mm-hmm. and for those of you who don't know, Google Stadia is going to be Google's new video game streaming platform service. So it's, it, they had a press conference at the Game Developers Conference, and it was like a fucking hour long. It was so boring, but they showed off a lot of cool stuff. But it's just you know tech nerds going out there and they can't talk to people yeah so but essentially what it is is it can stream from what it's claiming it can stream triple a games and you can you need no hardware to do it Mm -hmm. you just open up a web browser and you can start playing whether you use your keyboard or you plug in a usb controller whatever you want to use and it's going to be compatible with all kinds of usb controllers bluetooth controllers so you can use your xbox one controller your ps4 controllers Stuff like that. And since the, your client is basically just using that, you know, streaming kind of virtual thing, you can go between different platforms on the fly. So say the game that they used as a test subject was Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Mm-hmm. So they showed a guy playing it on a computer, and then he picked up a phone, and he had, a you know, the controller dock with it and stuff like that. And he instantly just continued his game on the phone and then went over to a tablet and then started continuously playing it on the tablet. So, whether how accurate that is, that looked really cool. So, the thing that just instantly chats my ass is the fact that, like, I'm the Twitter guy, so I see all all the gaming Twitter peoples and stuff like that, who I talk to, who I try to socialize with, make relationships with. All it was was... Instantly. All, all positive, right? Oh, completely positive. <laughs> Not for me. This will never work. How's it going to happen? You don't even have the infrastructure. And it's it was all the same talking points. But what it really came down to... It's an echo chamber. It's an echo chamber of people who wanted to be the first one to say, I told you so. They want to throw a little quip out there. Of- they're, they're doubling down right away on this will never work, this will... Like the thing, one of the things that really got to my ass was people saying that, "Oh, here's the next on live, or here's the next Ouya." Yeah. One on live was a USB stick. Yeah, I know it was streaming. It was a USB stick and a controller. Ouya was its own little shit box. 
two, these were Kickstarter projects. <laughs> these were things that people had to put money into to develop their own little infrastructure and system. So it didn't have the biggest financial backing. It was kind of limited in what it had. Google has more money than money exists. Now, I'm not saying Google's infallible. Google's had a ton of failed projects. Like, just look at what happened with Google Glass. Look at what Google Plus was for social media. Mm -hmm. Just because it says Google doesn't mean it's going to shit gold. Let's yeah. put it that way. Definitely true. But if any of these are going to be the first one to take off, chances are it's going to be Google. So they have the infrastructure behind it as long as they stick with it and they don't pull, say, a Sony with the Ouya or Ouya, Sony <laughs> with the Vita. I have Ouya on the mind because everyone kept talking about the fucking Ouya. So <laughs> as long as they put some actual time and support into it, if anyone has the resources to pull it off, it'll probably be them in this day and age. Now, here's where some of the legitimate complaints came from, but it still kind of annoyed me because the hot take cultures – who have to get the video out right away after it's done. Of course. The reaction video. I mean, yes, picture. <laughs> it's true. Oh, yeah. Always the same fucking faces over and over. Yep. So a lot of, like, they're saying how, you know, well, they didn't really tell you anything. They didn't tell you what games they have. They didn't tell you the price point. They didn't tell you the requirements. Valid points. Very valid points, yes. But this was an announcement conference. Yeah. This is the one where they're just putting it out there to generate hype. Just, hey, guys, just so you know. Hey, this is what it is. This is what we're going to tell you it can do. We'll give you details later. So let me so, – why don't you pour a beer? Take, take a breath. I know you're, you're worked up about it. I was so worked up before. I'm at, I, mean, I wish I could have just ran it at that point. That could have been a whole podcast. So, so Jim, you know, he's worked up because he saw and I stuff. And there is a follow-up to, to this. So my thing is, as soon as he sent it to me, I've been doing nothing but – Looking into what the hell does all this mean? What does it represent? Jim covered a lot of the points, but the big claims that this that that they're claiming is that number one, aside from the seamless going from phone to tablet to your laptop or computer, is that you can stream up to 4K HDR at 60 frames per second. That um, the servers they'll be using, and I'm going to butcher the numbers because I. I'm not trying to dig too much while we're doing this podcast live. Um, if the PlayStation servers are like 14 terabytes. Oh, the teraflops. The yeah, teraflops. so the PS4 Pro's, Pro's 4.2, the Xbox One X is 6. They're claiming that they're going to have 14 teraflops. Yeah. So those – <clears throat> With no hardware. So I completely believe I, – I do believe because the one thing Google has been – working behind the scenes and, and digging more into tech of Google, they are trying to streamline everything cloud. So I don't doubt they know how to do cloud-based shit. To Jim's point, that just because they're Google doesn't mean that from a gaming standpoint, and even though they've thrown out that, yeah, they've started contacting people for uh, basically first-party development, doesn't mean they're going to be the best games. But I don't doubt that if any of these things that we've talked about on I don't know how many podcasts that things will go digital. The idea is it that terrible to believe that the one service in the world would have the best possibility with the technology available right now to stream it would probably be magnitudes better than gaming companies who are really great at making games in their consoles. Whereas this is a company that's great at stre streaming cloud-based shit. I'm not. I'm not saying it's going to work perfect, and I'm not saying that they're going to be. You're going to be able to run shit at 60 frames per second at 4K. And the number one issue that a lot of people claimed, and I'm sure Jim will get to, people were saying like, "Well, you have a lot of these ISPs that have limit caps," and their newest claim was that you can run at this level for, at 25 megs. No, it was uh, to do 1080 at 60 frames. You need a, at least a 25 meg Mbps, whatever. Yeah. You know. For internet, so which is basic, which is which is considered basic. Of course, right away people are like, "That's not going to be possible." Well, even even I made a snarky comment I'm like, "Oh, well, that was fun while it lasted." The reason I said that is the only places where you're really going to get internet like that is the big cities. Like, and can I back up that for one second? I, you're you're right. I see is that, that what argument. You're about to say? No, no, no. I've seen that argument. My problem with that argument is just like. 
the PC Master Race, as they call themselves, this isn't going to be made for everyone. This isn't for a small town Johnny who can't get that internet service. Move to a city. Don't be poor. It's I, not I, hard. No, I'm not saying that it's right. I, <laughs> fuck. Like, people get, get in their head like, oh, if there's a service out, it should be able to get to everyone. It's like, this is meant to be what the future probably will go to, whether you like it or not. Like, there will be a point when you your stream service is a hell of a lot better than it is now. In our lifetime, we went from shitty-ass dial-up watching images load to what we have now, and we're still not satisfied enough. We want faster and faster. So eventually, we'll get there. Yeah. So this is just probably going to be that first prototype model of like, okay, this is what it could look like. And, yeah, it's not the worst idea. Of course, you can shoot a million holes into it. I think a lot of people are fearful because everything we've said before, collecting becomes obsolete. If it actually works, you know a lot of people are going to follow suit and start going into just digital only. And I think the ones that have the biggest concern is if your PC doesn't have to be built up to a three or $4,000 spec to run games like that, then these people are going to feel quite foolish that why am i doing this yeah same. not saying there's not reasons to do it um, that's different i'm just saying i can understand that like, there's that uh there there's that whole feeling of oh god like i'm becoming obsolete with what i love to do and it's not the case but i i think this will be what the future is whether this is successful it's going to depend on a million gazillion factors but the fact that they're, they're trying to you know they got uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, they got Doom Eternal. Those are the ones they keep throwing down our throats. Like Jim said, unlimited funding. How far are they willing to go? Now, the one reason why I believe this could last, the other big thing they pushed out is that if you're playing a game, you can automatically stream it. And if you're watching that, then you can click and go into that game. Which, we'll get into that. Yeah, which is... What that will create, and mark my words on this, whether it's Twitch, whether whatever streaming service. Well, it's service, actually it's just YouTube because Google owns YouTube. Just, exactly. So now you're going to see them be, have a much bigger push for YouTube streaming. And if you are a Stadia user, am I saying that right? Stadia, I think, yeah. yeah. If you're a Stadia user, so you know how the algorithms work within YouTube. The people who use Stadia... Their algorithms, you're, you're, they're going to be the first search, first recommend it, first everything. If you ain't using it, I don't care how big you are, it's going to drop. Sign up right now. <laughs> so God damn, I, we need the help. I think like if you show like, oh, I'm playing Stadia, they're going to promote the shit out of you. And by we already know like if you want to do shit on, on any video service, you're doing it on YouTube. And if you're looking for searching shit, you're doing it through Google. And if they are able to say, hey, a brand new AAA game, you know, on Odyssey on consoles is 60 bucks. If they can work out a deal and be like, it's 40 bucks, 30 bucks, and I stream it right now and I'll get the first views, that's where they're going to try and target. And I believe Google is smart enough to recognize that the esports, the streaming, that's where shit's going for the competitive nature. It's not good for single player and people who love the core concept of video games. I could see it being successful for those reasons. Yep. So, going back to this, jumping in with your favorite YouTuber and streamer thing. Mm -hmm. Disaster waiting to happen. Because of Google's own rules. Because Google recently announced rules for YouTubers such as us that you can get demonetized for what your comments say. Yeah. So, do there, was not, ca- there was caveats put on that, though. But still. So, what's to stop people who don't like your content from just jumping into a game with you and writing, and we're never, 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 never. Well, there, there, there is one difference, though. It's not meant to dr- jump into the game with you. It's meant... If no, I'm, you, you go into a lobby in a queue to wait to play the game with the streamer. Well, no, you can do that, too. But the bigger purpose of it is to sell more of the games. If Jim's playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I can click... Instantly buy it and instantly not play where you're. Well, at. you're not even playing it. It's just part of the service. That's part of the service that you're paying. Yeah, for. but that's what I'm saying is that like now, oh, this game seems really cool. I'm gonna play. It. Yes, you could play with your streamer, which they're always. I'm talking about directly the playing with the streamer part. Oh yeah, that. yeah. It's gonna. That is gonna be. Where I it's think gonna that be. is asking for trouble. 
It and is. also, going back to the conference, they had Matt Pat come up. I'm not a fan. Let me just put it that way. I'm not a fan of most YouTubers and I'm, or, and I'm or th- Twitter users. And I'm thinking, there's no way in hell that this pussyfooter is going to let people come in and play games with him. Yeah, and you should not any, gonna happen. And if you are one of those people, I mean, just like when you play a game on Xbox Live or PS, whatever, you usually have options like, are you in an open lobby or not? And again, that's a thing where they didn't really go into specifics. They just yeah. said what you can do. Sure. So I think, like going back to subject at hand, my gripes, it just comes down to people being just. You know, I think you made a really good point where it's basically the future that people know is coming, but they don't want to see yet. And the fact that they're saying it's going to come out this year. That's fucking nuts. I, either that means they legit have been working on it behind the scenes and somehow zero leaks. Or they're just, you know, blowing smoke up our ass. Because even I'm like, the infrastructure isn't there for most of the country for this. So, Which, once again, they don't care. Well, that's what, that's maybe at this point. point they don't. Yeah. And maybe they'll just be like, oh, we'll get these people. And then when it builds up eventually, I don't know. But it, I, it isn't Google doing their own like Google Fiber thing too? They're, I mean, Google. Like, they're gonna they're gonna take over the world. Them and Disney are gonna fight for who owns all of media. That's they, what's gonna happen. They are legit. Like I mean, you can't comprehend the money and things that they've already. There, there's other and I and I looked at it the other day and I'm kicking myself in the ass. There's other major companies within tech and outside tech that Google is gonna looking to purchase. That is just going to make them tenfold be bigger yeah. which is part of the reason why you have these well i don't want to get political so i won't go there right but please don't one point i want to make is what you just said the idea of you see your favorite streamer youtuber whatever playing a game you want to go and join them think about so you're worried like oh man they're gonna get demonetized i think youtube will make exceptions for stadia users. well they already make exceptions for their biggest users yeah. anyway but think about think of think, think about people like us though no, no. Say we stream through it. Yes. We're fucked because Google support does not care about people with 4,000 subscribers. Absolutely not. But but that's – that. like that's – I've come to terms and people still fight that like you – Google, you need to worry about – or YouTube, you need to stop you're <laughs> fucking up. <laughs> they don't care because you figure – and I saw the statistic like on an average per minute, the amount of videos uploaded and views and users – there's new channels being made every day. So, yeah, they don't care about the guy who's got 4,000, you know, right. subscribers. But look at Twitter. They don't, they don't care about the people with 100,000 yeah. subscribers. Look at Twitter. Imagine the idea of you're now going to have an open access to your favorite celebrity and the shit that they get sent to them. It's that same idea. Like, now you're opening you, – the veil is much shorter. You know, right now, if you have a favorite streamer or something, it's your content. And you can go in a stream and – like you experienced when you were console wars, you have some trolls who want to ruin the whole thing. Woo. We we inherited a lot of trolls from that one. Which you'll get with games gamers anyway. Um, but that's going to be the future. Like if it's already happening in Twitter, and it is happening in Twitter, like real time. Like you you can sit here and tweet your favorite person. Yeah, they can choose to do whatever. Game it's tougher because you're a little more interactive. But like you said, if there's a queue. Do you really think if your favorite streamer has a queue of? Uh, thousand people that you're never gonna you're in there. ever gonna get in there yeah and they're probably gonna have like a set party that's already with them to avoid and anyone. that's the thing you don't really know whether they're gonna say they want to keep these people or if it's just gonna for user exactly. based thing it's gonna cycle them out no so. what the and and you know what's gonna come from that and mark my words on this pick okay youtuber number one i'm gonna play Fortnite for a s- extra service for five dollars a month you get to play with me on this game yeah yeah it's 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 all tied in, and that's why I'm saying I don't think it could be in, regardless of the technical specs, it will never run as good as somebody who has a four thousand dollar computer. But and do uh, gamers really care about that if you're getting to do what the whole point of the game is? Yeah, true. And here's another thing: it's going to depend on how much it costs per month because, like yeah. we talked about before, Xbox Game Pass. Sure, you're going to be confined to the power of the Xbox One, but it's ten bucks a month, and you have a shitload of games. Another problem with the Stadia thing, too. Games staying on there. Games cycling out. Problem that people have with digital-only future in the, anyway. Yeah. Games coming and going. Game like you know, game preservation's dead at that yeah. point. Yeah, it's not. And it, that's the thing. They're crowds at this point. Like, gaming used to be such a niche thing. You're a nerd. Why are you collecting? Then it was like, 
a little more accepted, but they were still hardcore collectors. And to this day, they're still, there's a smaller niche of like, I'm going to be a collector, I'm going to be hardcore. And there's just so many casual, like, I play games. Right. Like, and it's just going to keep going that way. So, for better or for worse, I, I'm not saying it's going to be a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's just something that... Oh, I just think it's too early to too early to really tell. No, no, no. It is. Up. It is. <laughs> but, yes, don't be overly, like, anal and negative about it's going to be terrible and da, da, da. And don't be overly positive either. Just be like... like if you're Let's any, see what happens. If you're anything other than... Like, yeah, sure, it's meant to build hype, so if you're like, oh, this is cool, cool. But just don't... Uh, so let I, us, I'm on too much social media. That's what it comes down to. Yeah, which is part of the reason I could never do a Twitter because I'd be responding too, to too many people about too many things. And I'd be... Deleted playing, my goddamn tweet today, and I'd dick. Be play, I, and Danny. I'd be playing too many... If Jim writes fucking Rocket League as his favorite game... It is uh, a perfect uh, game. So I won't even go into that, but if I ran the Twitter, you'd see good game suggestions. You'd see good game choices. Best, best games ever. Resident so Evil 1, Resident Evil 2, point Resident is, Evil 2 again. You know, Jim will be like, oh, Lemmings is a great game. It is a great game. Boom, boom, boom. Tell me I'm wrong. And then he'd be like, like a thousand lemon games. And then I'd be like, hey, Jim, what games did you buy? I bought this terrible game this game. Did you get Resident Evil 2 Remake? Because we're in a goddamn Resident Evil month. No. Oh, oh, you mean like two months from now it'll be 20 bucks? Oh, I should really so, rush out and get it for 60 bucks. It's funny you mentioned game prices, Jim. I know, because I saw ju- you write this in I'm earlier. This is that this, topic. Even though we're jumping over other stuff, and before we go on, if you have any comments on the Stadia, which I know plenty of you probably will. Hot topic. Please let us know, good or bad. It doesn't matter. Just be. Uh, I will probably get beat up for this one. Fine. I mean, I, I'm not good or bad for it. I'm just saying, like, let's see what happens, and it's kind of an inevitable future. In, in, the inevitable. Same, the same. The same. T two. Jim. In, in, inevitable. The fate. Things are. Things are inevitably going to change. Right. The fate. The fate ain't what you make. Storm's coming. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm. You know, I'm gonna be good. Fuck Jim. I'm gonna still save his his topic for him specifically because <laughs> I just want to throw out there. This is gonna be short. It's on a. F- a couple different websites. Oh my but, god, what? I didn't even see this yet. Theverge.com is one of the articles I have up right oh now. Oh no. I saw this literally this morning that Walmart is reportedly looking into launching its own cloud gaming service. This is the one fear when I saw the Stadia <laughs> stuff. Bigger <laughs> companies are going to come out and be like, maybe that is a good idea. So one of the claims is that, that Walmart said that theoretically they could run the same type of infrastructure because they have six giant server farms of just like, you know, these these crazy giant farms to be able to compete with these other things. I will say for sure there's no fucking way this happens, but it's just very interesting because they kind of just threw it down. I can't tell if it's real, and from what I've been reading, a lot of other people can't either. But Walmart is one of those companies that's they got the the money and they're kind of probably looking at other investments to throw out there. So you're gonna see this kind of mimicky copycat bullshit. Yeah, and the, this article here kind of mentions it. But Walmart in the past year came out their own line of gaming computers and laptops. Yeah. Mm, a little underwhelming from what people say. A lot of poor build quality. So again, Walmart's another company with. All the money in the world. So, could I throw this out there for Walmart? I don't think a bunch of. I don't think Walmart's going to have the people in place. They're not a tech company. They're a value. They are. They know they're get the cheapest value for what you have. Right. But let me let me throw let me throw this little nugget at you. No, okay. So, would it be crazy to assume that say they did a really poor, shitty quality? Say Stadia was a success. Okay. What if Walmart did care for all those people we said they Stadia didn't care about outside of the big cities? That's and for dirt cheap. That's the you're that's, not going to get the same AAA quality games. You'll get a good amount of games, but what if they did that? What if for ten bucks a month, you don't need a box. You can have a three hundred dollar laptop from Walmart, and for ten bucks a month, you can play games that come out these days at say seven twenty thirty frames per second. Yeah. Do you think people on a very limited budget are going to care that much that they're not playing at the optimal settings? 
Which exactly, my guess is no. Yeah, and that's that's my point. There's plenty of people out there that will not and cannot put out that kind of funds for the games to run optimally, but they don't give a shit because any true gamer, you want it to be optimal, but. Like me, like how many things have we emulated? Because it's like I'm not gonna go out and pay 200 bucks for a game to see if I like it. Let me play it first. Right. If this was out there, I think there's a market. Yeah. So it's it, it's it's silly. It's, it's to who me, you market it to. But at the same time, it's also eh, I don't think it's really gonna happen. So any other thoughts on that, Jim? No, but uh, no, because I just literally heard about it just now. Just but. now, yeah. So I threw that up there. If any of you haven't heard or have heard of this, let us know what you think. Um, like I said, I just see it more as a potential market for those who couldn't afford Stadia or can't get the right internet requirements, whatever the case is. Right. All right. Do you want to check the camera? We got five more minutes, so we're good. So we can real qu- we'll real quick throw in the Nintendo phone. Okay. <clears throat> so not that it's related. But something going back to one of the comments we made before. This is on BGR.com, but it's on a million other websites. Nintendo is thinking about launching their own gaming phone. Did you see this? I tagged you in either Facebook or something. Yeah. Um, There's very... There's not a ton of information about this. But they kind of... What was that one game, old gaming console that was a phone? That really shitty one. Oh, the uh, N-Gage. I no kind of think of it like that. Now, these ones are kind of thinking they want to launch almost a Switch-capable console that also can be a phone. And it's not Which, the Which, as we've talked about before, there's already attachments for right. normal phones that normal. could... Yes. Very much emulate a Switch. So this, to me, it's not out of the realm of possibility that Nintendo are so... Oh, man. I don't even know the right word to use. They're they're so Confident. St- they're so stubborn that, like, our games are so goddamn good that people will for- forego what the use of an actual phone is <laughs> just to play our shit even more mobily and have it on your phone. That wouldn't shock me. I think this is a terrible, like... You're going to hate me for saying this... But, like, a Wii U, like, it's not going to do very well. And the Switch did it, is doing amazing and it continue will, will continue. But if they actually go out there and try and make a phone out of something that can play Switch games and say just, you know, why don't we link up with other smartphone companies? Here's what it always comes down to with gaming on a cell phone. Until playing straight up on your cell phone is as good and as... Until the inputs in the controller is as good as it is sure. with a normal controller, it's not going yeah. to take off. Which I don't mm-hmm. believe. So that's what I'm saying. Either Nintendo is saying we're just making a gaming console that can just barely call, or they're going to have that same issue. Yeah, I'm going to guess they're going to have the same issue. I just I don't know. I, mean, I think they're I think they're reaching a little bit on this one. They, I think, <clears throat> and and this this could all be very premature because they like. They were on a, not that overall they were Nintendo company was on downside from Wii U, but with the Switch making the sales they do, they're like, oh shit, we have money to spend now. Like let's expand ideas instead of making another really great console. Let's they, fuck around a bit. They always innovate. So yeah, so I don't. Well, this is something we'll probably track. It's very early in in development and thoughts, but. Uh, yeah, there, it's very, very far-fetched at this point as far as will it actually go through. So if you have any thoughts on it, let us know. You going to buy it? Huh? We know plenty of people on Twitter who would buy it. We know a lot of Nintendo fanboys yeah. and girls. Yes. All right. And our next topic. You know what? This will become a recurring segment. A write-in. A write-in. <laughs> it was the middle of the podcast write-in. So if you've been watching this whole time or listening, we appreciate it. Now I can reveal a new segment that I'm throwing in there is Jim's Terrible Decisions. I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe there's going to be a better title came up. Maybe it's just the blub blub moment. I don't know. But either way, uh, before we get started on the podcast, Jim and I, we meet up. Sometimes we record reviews, whatever the case is. But I noticed today on Twitter... That Jim posts a picture of him playing Hotel Mario. 
on the CDI. Yep. And I decide, okay, whatever. Like, he got that. No big deal. I know nothing about prices for CDI games. We just know the CDI is a terrible console that he got dirt cheap from a thrift store and now is trying to make the most out of it by buying better known games for it. That's nothing new for Jim. He does it for a turbo graphics. He, Jim, we know, is a collector and he's more than anything, it's it's this is a positive I'll throw for Jim. He's brand loyal. Once he gets with something, He'll he'll fight for it till the end, whether it's good, bad, fucks him in the ass. It doesn't matter. I don't remember fighting for the CDI yet. (laughs) Keyword yet. You're about to. So can I turn to CDI guy in wrestling with gaming who loved the CDI? I don't know. Things happen. Listen, Jim. Let's uh, (laughs) let's just stay on topic here. Okay. So I'm busting his balls. We're we're doing some recording for Resident Evil Four review. And I just happened to mention, so, like, Jim, what did you pay for Hotel Mario CDI? And for those well, of you who don't... Right, you, don't have to, you don't have to say CDI because it's an exclusive. That's fine. Doesn't change the fucking fact that I'm talking about the CDI. And I keep bringing that up because most, most of you are probably like, what the hell is a CDI? That's a good question. You should Google it. It's a... T- terrible system which i've already said and jim would not deny so my first thought okay it's a terrible system didn't make a ton of games how many games total in that library i forget because between like the actual games the stuff that isn't considered a game and all the edutainment stuff on there because it's 100 a, to 200 yeah i guess so that's, probably 200 ish let's that's say that probably being generous with all the rare crazy bullshit that can be made so i'm thinking okay hotel mario the nerd angry video game nerd he made a really funny video covered that and some of the zelda games i know even then he said the zelda games were expensive he didn't mention the the mario game so i was like okay jim like what'd you spend and right away right you're you're thinking of 2008 prices there he gave that face so i said (laughs) okay like did you spend more than 30 bucks Woo! right away pissed off so I'm like, okay, in my head. All right, well, he's not going to like – I know Jim. He's not He's not buying good new games. He's not willing to spend too much on terrible things because he could have had a Vec- – what's sad is he could have had a Vectrix for maybe yeah. a little more than what he paid for this. I had to pay like 300 bucks for that. It wasn't that much. Just for the system. Not when we were at that thing. It was 150 yeah. No, it was like two fifty. No, yeah. So I say, did you pay 50? the turbo? The turbo CD was like one fifty alone. Can we get back to this? I'm just saying. I'm making corrections listen, here. Listen, I'm a man of facts. You're wrong in the end. So shut the fuck up. I'm the judge. You're sitting there as the defendant. Don't fucking interrupt. <laughs> All right. Do I say? Do you pay fifty bucks? Because we're going through Resident Evil month, Jim. Hasn't yet bought Resident Evil 2 Remake. And surely he's not going to pay the same amount that you would pay for a brand new Xbox One, PS4, PC, whatever the fuck, game that you would for a shitty game on a shitty system that nobody cares about. And sure enough, he goes, nope. Nope. So at this point, I'm just furious. And Jim, why don't you tell him, what was your detail or what was your little hint as to how much it cost? I said it rhymes with P-Boat. Which, right away, pissed me off because I don't even know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> he probably heard on a terrible podcast or radio show. Actually, no, I did not. All up here. Which pisses me off more because then it's an original terrible thought. So, I don't know. I just said, Jim, I don't know what you're talking about. So, he says, C-Note. If you don't know, that's a 100 goddamn dollars for a game on a system nobody cares about. I don't care what you say, it is not, it can't even hold up to the top 100 NES games. Yeah. And top it, 100, it's that's certainly, structure. if you lined it up against Super Mario games, it's not even, it, it's it's dead last. I don't care what game. You oh, play. it is not dead last. What's, what's worse, off the top of your head, that you've actually played? Mario's missing. It's better. Never played it? It's better. <laughs> it's it, fucking God. And you know what, Jim? Now that I've expressed some of my anger about your Jim's terrible decisions, why don't you explain 
What do you do in that game, Jim? Well, Brian, for those of you out there who do not know, in Mario is Missing, you are doing what you always do, trying to save Princess Peach from Bowser. But to do that, you have to go through a series of hotels. Hence the name of the game. So you go from floor to floor, closing mm-hmm. doors. Oh, and so what? you so you so you're jumping on Goombas, you're fighting Jim bosses, Goombas, Koopas, there's caterpillar guys. You're actually fighting them, huh? So you get the yeah. power ups, you get Tanuki. You, suit. Get, you get power ups. You get the you <laughs> you get the you get a mushroom, which gives you an extra hit of life, much huh. like the super mushroom. So you Mario grow games. bigger, right? No, you just kind of blink. Oh, okay. So, okay. So, fails there. Okay. So, you get the flame, right? Because that's really an important one. That's well, I haven't gotten that far yet because it's actually a very challenging game. But do you get the flame? I don't. I couldn't tell you yet. So I'm working you, my way so up. So you don't get the flame. Okay. So there's clearly the soundtracks on par with the original 3D Mario's, right? Mm, not exactly. Okay. Okay. Huh. So the <laughs> levels are so crazily varied, like. There's like tons of variety because certainly well, you get from, you get seventy levels in the game, Brian. Sure, and I'm sure all the doors and all the hotels are just so different. And they you pl- get you get seven main ones with ten levels each. Mm, okay, so they all play so, so super different. I haven't even got past the first one yet. I'm Challenging not game. shocked. Hard game. Yeah, I'm sure it's not, but. You play it then, because we are going to play it. Oh, we are going to. Oh, don't you worry. We are going to play it. We are going to play it. I have plans. I have plans. And here's the deal. Take your bullshit collecting. If there was a (laughs) blank checkbook and you did never knew nothing about this game. Double negative. Good grammar. Yeah, exactly. You don't know anything about this game. Okay. What are you willing to pay now that you've played it? If I didn't know it. didn't know if I did not know anything about the game, yeah. why would I even buy it? That's a good question, Jim. Why would you buy it? Because because there's other games that we you need to play, right, Jim? I mean, there's games that have to be played. And Everyone has games that have to play. Looking at just footage that you've seen of Resident Evil 2 Remake, do you think there's any chance that this game is as good as that? Right. Why would I ever buy a game new these days when within a month or two, it'll be at the very least half off, if not more by that point? That's a great question. Anyone who buys a brand new game this this day and age is a sucker. Would so you, if you want to be a sucker, you can go ahead and be the sucker that you want to be. So would you say you're as much of a sucker as somebody who buys a game that's 20 years old on a system nobody cares about, that barely works, and it's terrible? Look, that Brian, pays the, market, the, market, the market determines would, the price. Would, the market determines the price. Yeah, but does that mean that's a good game? Because that's all that should matter. It is end. actually surprisingly fun. Get the fuck out of here. It's fun. Because you are the type of guy, and we've we've covered this. Look, I we, would never pay 400 bucks for the Zelda CDI games. That can go fuck itself. Cut to five years later. Jim, what'd you buy? Well, Brian, I got it for 350 It was a real good deal. Bleh. <laughs> Bleh. So, here's, here's my question, Jim. We've established you're an irresponsible collector. We've established that you collect for irrelevant systems that nobody cares about, but there's a very niche market, so prices are high on games you like. Or not even Only like. the games that people would actually want. Exactly. and they only, This is one of those games but, that people want. And they only want it because it's rare, because, and arguably, <clears throat> Nerd reviewed it. It's, it's gotten value from him. So, from an actual game standpoint, you've already admitted, it ain't worth it. And you know you're not the type that is going to turn around and make a profit on it. And you sure as shit don't care about game preservation. So at the end of the day... If this- I just care about game preservation, Brian, why would I have walls full of useless, outdated plastic? If anything, I'm a, muse- I'm a museumist guy. This is all why it's called Jim's Terrible Decisions. Because <laughs> you are a just... There's a term for it, and I'm kicking myself in the ass for not remembering it. That's but, a good term. But you are a work. shelf collector. That's what it is. You don't play all your games. I do play my games. No, you don't play I don't them. beat them. Jim, I do play them. We are going to start keeping – we're going to relook at the Excel file, and we're going to analyze. And playing – I'm saying you need to beat. I want to see how many of your games you've actually beat that you own. Okay. Who has the time to beat all these games? Why own games how, unless you're going to play how many, them? How many of the games on your Xbox that you've downloaded with uh, sales and shit have you beaten? You're absolutely right. But is it on a shelf? 
And did I pay $100 for them or did I pay $5? Well, who's to say I pay 100 bucks for all the games I buy, though? We're talking about we're talking about real cases. Game. We're talking real cases. You here, know right? that that equates... wouldn't that not mean that I would have more of an incentive to keep playing through so it to get better realize, through it to beat the game to get all the realize, footage for the review that we're going to do for the video that I'm going to make you do on this video. Let's put it this way: you realize that for a hundred dollars, I got games like Witcher Three, Bioshock Two, and add eighteen other titles to that twenty game list. You have two kids. You will never get through Retro th- Witcher Jim, Three. I have two kids, and I still get through more games than you because I'm allowed to. Because I got my balls. <laughs> because you don't go to work. Because I got balls. Balls. Okay. <laughs> okay. Some of us are allowed. Some of us. Some of, some of us okay. are. Yeah. <laughs> so, at the end of the day, in Jim's terrible decisions, which will be a recurring bit, because there's plenty of op- options I could choose from, when we play this game, and we realize just how terrible it is, and when I it's do not terrible, and when I do better than you at it, which is really going to chap your ass. <laughs> How about, hmm, you know what? Maybe we'll need to make a contest out of this. Okay. I'm formulating something. Oh, great. I'm not going to just try and drop it right here. Maybe there'll be a little challenge when we play that game and the ownership of that game. No, it's not happening. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what the fan. Maybe we get some Patreons that want to put 10 bucks a month up. <laughs> <laughs> maybe if we get, like, 10, 10 bucks a month uh, Patreons, maybe you can agree that you'll let me – Put that disc or that whole new game you got in a barrel of tannanite and blow it up on video for our fans. Maybe you'll let that happen. That's something you shoot to explode. In case you didn't know. Yeah. If we get ten ten dollar things, that's happening. That's that's happening. Mm-hmm. That's what has to happen there. That's right. No, okay. Yeah, so that's because that's what's gonna happen. If ten of you want to do that, we'll make it happen. Jim, Jim's getting a little nervous because he thinks, fuck, will people actually do Motherfucker, that? Motherfucker, you'd have to leave your house first. Don't you dare talk about that. <laughs> we'll call the boss, all right? See if you're allowed. Fine, I'd be allowed out. So, in Jim's terrible decisions, I want to hear what you guys think. Is Hotel Mario outside of what the market demands for it. Is it a good game? Has anyone out there played it? Has anyone even played a CDI game? That's what I really want to know. Because it all boils down to, if Jim had Resident Evil 2 Remake, I wouldn't be as mad as I am right now. And I know there's about going to be I can't least, wait to buy for 20 bucks new in a month. There's going to be I can't s- wait. at least six more purchases. I will gladly buy for 20 bucks new in a month. Six more purchases is my guess of th- things he'll buy between now and then of just games that are awful. Just like Hotel Mario. Not an awful game. Surprisingly good. I was surprised. Well, we'll see what the score... I just bought it for a bit for the site, and then I was like, oh, this is actually pretty fun. Way more fun than I expected. We'll see what the scores reveal, Jim. Won't we? You're going to sabotage it on purpose, like you I've always do. I've never sabotaged a game on purpose. Bull. I've... Unlike some people, I can be unbiased. I, I did it unlike, once. You did it multiple... I did it well, once. Well, this one's going against the Genesis version, and I have to say... Uh, Jim... You scored this game this way, and it's sequel this one. Oh, well, oh. I did I, it. I, I will admit that I did it with Simpsons Hit and Run. You did it many times, Jim. Incorrect. Many, many times. Incorrect. Calls it how I sees it. So, if you guys have any And thoughts, here's even the better thing. I never once said the game was worth its money. I'm saying market dictates. So, what dick. you're saying is you admit that it was a terrible decision, hence the bet. No. I admit so, it'll be a great decision for our lovely fans so, out there. Who will love to not only see your reactions to said game, but to see a game so notorious to be talked about. So Daddy was right? Huh. Of course not. That's crazy. It'll so, be worth it in the long run. So when it shoot when it shoots, Brian, to the top of our most viewed videos lists. How about that? You'll be thanking me. How about we make a bet? If that video alone can get a thousand views within How fast? Six months. Then I will, from this None point forward... None of our videos get that This anymore. point forward, I'll say Jim is a genius, and he has no terrible ideas, and I was absolutely wrong. But if it doesn't, Jim has to admit he's a blood bluff, <laughs> and that he makes terrible decisions, and that Daddy's always right. See, I could have gone You said it, it was all worth it. You said it was it'll all be, worth it, be, Jim. It will be worth it. So why don't you admit to the... 
six months. That's pretty solid. Give it a year. It takes hey, our videos at hey, least a year to kick off. It's taking some of our best ones two years to kick off. Some two, three years. Would, some would say we're growing like hotcakes. We were on a good run there. We were on a run where, like, every day, which for us is amazing, where we're getting, like, five to six subs a day. And then the last, like, couple of days have been, like, two and three. If that. So here's my question. Why don't you just say you'll accept the bet? <sighs> or are you scared that the showstopper – Jesus Christ. <laughs> Are you scared that the showstopper will just win again? <sighs> now, there are multiple reasons for these glasses, Jim. Other than the fact that I'm the showstopper. I'm sure. Would you like to know one of them? Let me hear it. Future's too bright. Gotta wear shades. Well, what? I'm sorry, my own page. You can keep this. <laughs> Buy me out. Give me half. Give me half of our YouTube bank. Buy me out. I'm done. So let us know what you think. Don't worry. There'll be plenty of other Jim's terrible decision bets in the future. I actually did. Actually, on this subject, I do have a month kind of planned. Where oh, I can't wait. I'm going to do a bunch of games. You're just going to be hooting and hollering about. I can't wait, Jim. I can't wait. It'll. Probably drive all these bits. So let us know what you think about that bit if you want to see more of it. <sighs> Moving on to recurring bits. Debatable whether this is controversial or not, but I wanted to throw a witch's better out there for Super Mario Brothers 2 or Legend of Zelda. Right. Did you know? Doki Doki 2. That Super Mario Brothers 2 is actually. Doki, Doki, Panic? Yeah. What? How'd you know? The nerd. No one ever talks about that. The nerd. No one, no one has ever talked about that. <laughs> and everyone who ever mentions it, anytime the game's brought up, is original and smart and a genius. And, and did you thank know you, it was so much... Thank you, God, for these people out there. Did these, you know These it was brave, so much, knowledgeable souls. Did you know it was so much better because there was a poison mushroom that killed you, but it was too hard for... For North American audiences, so they had to team it down. Thank God that Howard Phillips had the foresight, <laughs> because people in the know, in the know, Brian, people in the know know who Todd Phillips is, had the foresight to say, this isn't the game North America Did he wants. make Hotel Mario? No, 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 no. He's not that good. <laughs> so I chose these two titles. These are both black sheep. These yes. are both very questionable in the grand scheme of things. The whole por- purpose was, I feel like both games get shit on. Way, Way too much. Too much. Neither much one... like Hotel Mario. No, because no, of the no, internet. No, 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 <laughs> because no. of the internet, because they get shit Jackie. on way more for being a little bit too different than their hey, Jim, normal counterparts. What are the chances Hotel Mario is even close to as good as either of these games? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. So my point is, these games get shit on way too much because they followed up just friggin' legendary games. They broke the mold. Well, one of them broke the mold, and. It's just they they get lost in 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 the mix, especially whole Super Mario Brothers two because it was followed by three, which uh, any, arguably any one of the best. That, obviously, yeah. Any site that pretty much rates games says that's the best NES game ever. So I've played both. Jim, have you played both? Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> this is just which one do you think is better? I'll let you go first because. I'll be honest, either way, I don't have a super strong opinion, but I do have a thought. I'll, I mean, I'm going to say Super Mario Bros. 2 just because that's actually my favorite of the original trilogy. Hmm. I like it more than 3. Like, I just, maybe I like the Doki Doki kind of setup more. I think it's a very well-designed game. The music is excellent. as The music is excellent in all of them. Yeah. And Is it your favorite music of the 3? It's it's kind of on par with all of them. I don't know something about it. I think I just like it's maybe the one where like one is so you know it's groundbreaking, simple game, very yeah. fun. I I still play it. But that soundtrack in one that's kind of unbeatable. It, it's 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 timeless, but you only yeah. get four songs. You get way more variety with two and three, and three is almost because I got into three late. Like it's too much there. It's a little bit too much there. So two was in that perfect spot where I was able to like really put a lot of time into that one. So purely nostalgic reasons, two is my favorite of the original three. Okay, but on its own, it's still a really solid game. Luckily, so yeah. And Zelda two's it's a really good game. 
the biggest knock on it is it's hard. It's not impossible. You just have to grind. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know how to go about things. Not impossible, but hard, very unforgiving, and it's completely different from the original Legend of Zelda, so that's why people shit on it. Yeah. it it's not the original Legend of Zelda. It's not linked to the past, which the style went back to. It's kind of the black sheep of... Yeah, it tried to really, so different. I mean, it's up there with Skyward Sword, I think, as the games that people would crap on the most of the mainline Zelda games. Yeah. No, absolutely. Okay, so you're going Mario Bros. I'm going to go Mario 2 for nostalgia, but they're both good games. So I'll go Zelda 2, not just to oppose Jim. Um, part of what he said... That's a huge game, too, by the way. Yeah. Zelda oh, two. yeah. Number one, the fact that it's like you got the gold case. That drew it to me as a kid, just eye candy. Played it. When I was a kid, I'll be honest, same deal. Played original Zelda. Never beat a... Ne- ne- uh, Never beat the original Zelda as a kid, but right away when I played this, I was like, "This ain't this ain't Legend yeah, of Zelda." You know, you know, it's a point in favor of Zelda too. You don't need Nintendo Power to beat it. That's very true. There are many positive things about Zelda two, and I'm going to say something super fucking controversial. I think overall, Zelda two might have a better soundtrack than Zelda one. It has more tracks, just like Jim is saying about Super Mario Bros. 2. There's more. I think Zelda 1 is more iconic, but there's more tracks available, arguably better. The interesting thing, and I'm going to pull a lot from the Angry Video Game Nerd. He pointed out that people right away saw Zelda 2 and said, oh, it's not even a Zelda game because it's so different. But at that point, there was only two Zelda games. So there wasn't a real format. It was... a you had the top down, and then you had the side scrolling, and then God after forbid. that, yeah, and then like Jim said, I'd even go so far as to say is Simon's Quest is not as bad a game as people say. No, it's not just, at all. It's just very, it's very flawed. Yeah, it's it was too ambitious for its time. Zelda Two is what, and Hotel Mario. Is Shut also the not fuck up. Bit. Zelda Two, the big Jim's hit the nail on the head. It is grind heavy. It's almost like. Think what Dark Souls is today. Like those games. Is it the Dark Souls of Zelda games? Stop trying to half stand up. You're going to hurt your knees. You're too old for this. My knees are fine. My ankles are shit. (laughs) So, yeah, it's like it is very grind heavy, which that's something I actually hate about games. But I don't know. Something about playing it, I appreciate it. I felt like the world was a little bigger. The things you were trying to do was a little more open. Sure, some of the random enemy encounters were annoying as hell, but it's really not a bad game. The reason why I'm picking it over Super Mario Bros. 2, while it is a semi-different style, I didn't think it was that different of a game from Super Mario Bros. 1 other than some abilities, that it didn't change the mold that much. Except you don't jump on heads. You have to throw stuff at people to kill them. That's what I mean. Like, that that piece. It's a pretty, pretty big thing. Yeah, but other than that, what's different? Did the Nothing. way it breaks down the levels, the so, way it's Oh, you them. mean going from left the to right? The fact you don't have Bowser and you, mean you going have from le- You mean going from left to All right the was mini different? the mini-bosses. So you go right to left? No, uh, That's okay. crazy. All right, fine. Yeah. Good, good. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Good argument. <laughs> good talk. So I, I felt like Zelda took a little bit more of a chance and... It went really crazy, and it I feel like that gets shit on even more than Mario 2. So, it, it does. So, I think for those reasons, I'm a little biased. I choose that. Brian's sticking better. up for the little guy. Can I say? I'm a man of the people. No, you're not. What do our comments say, Jim? <laughs> what, what, what do our comments <laughs> That's what I say. That's why you'll always be a Barry Horowitz. <laughs> so let us know what you guys think. I actually suspect most people will agree with Jim. Cause, I, don't, I don't know. Well, that, the, the, the Zelda this, fandom. This was the whole point, though, that most people prefer Super Mario Bros. 2 over Zelda 2. See, but I always get fucked. There's always fuckery. That's why Daddy's here. <sighs> <laughs> so let us know what you think below, guys. And the final bit which is recurring and seems to be gaining some good traction, the overrated and underrated. I just had, I just wanted to throw something because... We were having trouble coming up with one this week, yeah, to be honest. And more and more, we'll throw just very obvious topics that are... 
I, this isn't even hotly debated, and it's there's really it's very one sided on this. I feel like, but I'm gonna give Jim the benefit of the doubt. The Atari Twenty Six Hundred. For this purpose, if you're not familiar with this format, one of us chooses underrated, one is overrated. We debate no matter what we actually feel inside. So for this point, Jim is going to be saying that the Atari 2600 is underrated. I'm going to say it's overrated. So, Jim, I'm going to let you start. All right. I'm actually very surprised you gave me underrated, but... I want to give you the easy one. Okay. So, Brian, what would you say... Next to the NES is one of the most important games in all of early gaming. One of the most important systems. Games or systems? Systems. Ooh. Well, if I was throwing it out there. And even if you put games in there. I'd probably have to go to PS Vita. He's such <laughs> a piece <laughs> of dog shit. Wait, was that not the right answer? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, Here it comes. I'm going to have to go with, yeah, I'm going to say it, PS2, because that's the no, best okay. selling system. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so, look, the legacy <laughs> of the Atari, it can't be understated. It's, this, it's the system. It wasn't the first home video game system. It wasn't the first one to have interchangeable cartridges. Mm-hmm. But it's the first one that did it right. You have your Magnavox ICs of the world. You have your Fairchild Channel Fs. No one really cares. Mm-hmm. Overlays on the TV, barely playable versions of Pong. The Atari, how many arcade classes did you have come to it? Space Invaders, Missile Command, Pac-Man, butcher version as it is, but Miss Pac-Man, solid version, Centipede, Millipede, made classics for it like Yard's Revenge and, and Adventure. One of the arguably greatest games of all time in River Raid came onto it. The first third-party developer came about because of this system in Activision because of people who were like, well, Atari's kind of fucking us here, so let's make our own company. Just the iconic controller, just so many things that just were based in there and so many things that just came from it. So many, the groundwork, like how Mario came from Pitfall. You had the ports of games like Defender on there, Crystal Castles, just crazy stuff for the time. And all of it all fit on the games systems that were so it what like games that were filled with memory less than a one word Microsoft Word thing today. So there, I mean, there's no way to say that it's overrated. I, I mean, I know what the arguments can be for overrated, but it's wrong because of the importance. And not only that, the fun factor that you can still have with these games. 40, 50 years after the fact. Are they simple? Yes. Do they control somewhat a little rough on some of the round the edges on some of them? Possibly. But you know what? You can still find a ton of them that are approachable. They work for children from 3-year-olds to 80-year-olds. Anyone can play them. Timeless classic titles. And you know what? The hardware, tanks, still works to this day. Hmm. Okay. Are you done? Yeah, I'll stop now. So it's interesting. There's a few points you brought up that... Here we go. (laughs) You you can sit back. Um, There's a few points you brought up that are interesting. So number one, you said plenty of arcade classics were brought to it. That's cool. We've seen in the past when you have adaptations of things that are already perfect, they get dumbed down. Like many of the arcade games that came to the home console... Convenient? Sure. Was it as good as the arcade? Not really. Could you now emulate or play better versions in today's world? Sure can. So, there you go. That argument's... Talking about now. Uh, 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 Talking about uh, now, uh, uh, the Atari. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, wait. All right, I, I didn't interrupt you. And that's, you didn't and, interrupt me? That's and fine. that's what it's we're fine. doing. We're talking about now, Jim. What? Wait. The years? 2019. So, we're talking about the now. We ain't talking about... 1970s, 1980. We ain't talking about back then. We're talking about right now. So, in retrospect, historical importance, I absolutely agree. There's a time and a place for that. But you know what? The abacus was important before you had the calculator. The original NFL teams, when you had the fucking Steagles during World War II because there wasn't enough people. One year. Ah, ah, are you interrupting? Are you interrupting? 
Excuse me. Excuse me, Stiggles. sir. Excuse me, sir. Stiggles. Excuse That's me, That's what sir. you're throwing at me here. I'm saying, name me any player from the first NFL <laughs> Super Bowl championship. Na- name me a player. You can. Would you argue that the historical importance of the first Super Bowl is not important for all the ones that follow? Of course, in a natural progression, it is. But how much older is that? The Atari... Was it 50 years old, 40 years old? It's old, but it ain't, you know, in the grand scheme of time, there will be a point when you forget, just like the Odyssey, it was a first system. So you want to talk historical importance? Sure, it laid some groundwork. But by the time our kids grow up, you think they're going to ever play Atari games? That's Unless fine. you force them to? And shut the fuck up, because I'm not actually asking you, it's rhetorical, because I already won. So my question is, unless you force it, because... You brought the love of Atari because your brother had one, and you there was a bonding experience there. When you grow up, well, you're already pretty old. But as you get older true. and you let your kids play with video games, you're probably going to start them. NES is really going to be the first version, nah. M- maybe even later. Maybe you just go right to your goddamn Switch. Maybe your Hotel Mario. I don't know what the hell you're going to do. But my point, Not a bad start. <laughs> but my point is... You, you pointed out game simple, yes, which makes them classic and easy to pick up and play, sure. But you're telling me on your, your little mobile phone and all your other systems, there aren't simple, fun games that are basically copycats of those original games, but they're made better because that's what innovation is, Jim. If you want to live in the past with your Abacus, with your Steagles, you absolutely can. I'm saying I'm living now and... While you respect the past, you don't say it's actually underrated. Because who the hell ever actually ever said the Atari 2600 is overrated? A lot of people, actually. They don't. That's a problem. They do. Because is there an Atari age? They say it's uh, underrated. Once again, this is all rhetorical, so shut the fuck up. So there is one, arguably one of the bigger forms is Atari age. Because there's still people fucking clinging on to this idea that... The Atari is still the greatest system of all time. I will never argue the historical importance because you can't. That's stupid to do. But to sit there and be like, "Uh, you know what? Me as a person, I love old 60s and 70s muscle cars, but I'm not going to say they perform as well as a friggin' 2019 sports car today because that would be stupid, Jim. So if you sit here and try and say it's underrated, did I did I not is, uh, did I never is, say that this, they performed as well? This is rhetorical. I think that's an invalid argument. This, this is I just have to say this is rhetorical. Objection overruled. So here's what I want to show to the audience: there's one that composed himself and one that couldn't. And when you're rational like some folks, you make a terrible argument, and you fight for a system that its time has passed, and. Maybe it was a little overrated when you look at it in the past because let's boil down the games. All right. There's maybe 50, and I'll be generous with that. They're really good. But without a manual, what are the chances you're going to get through any of those games? Easily. Take away shoot 'em ups, and I'm saying the best games of the system. You ever going to play Adventure and know what the fuck you're going to do without? I did it without a manual you, the first time I ever played sure it. You sure didn't because you also knew because you've seen no, enough. No, I did. You've this is enough, before I did You've even seen, seen enough. I had an Atari com- plug and play with 10 games when I was 18. Let the record show. Jim lies all the fucking time. So, my point is, yes, nobody ever argues that the Atari's overrated. That's fact. Yes, they do. And All the time. And the fact that if you were to call that system underrated and your biggest basis is the historical importance, if you wipe that clean. The games are still fun. Timeless. Get, your, there, get one of your kids. Uh, uh, when, when you're when let your the record son, show when that he's trying to interrupt. So I win, Fine. I win by that. Fine. argument. Fine. There is no counter. Uh, this there is. Uh, 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 uh. No, this is we each get one chance, Jim. You fucked up. You didn't, did you, didn't, you didn't say enough. Get, when your so, son turns uh, uh, four, so you and him grab is, a paddle, play frogs and flies. Tell me you don't have fun. Why tell me he doesn't have fun. Do that when tell me he doesn't have games. the time of his life. You're telling me there's not plenty of other games I could give him that are like just as fun? No. Yeah, there is. 
I could give him, I could give him Hotel Hotel Mario Gem. Nah. And you know what? That's a simple game. And nah, you know you're, what? You're, he would eat it. He would you, eat it. You know That's what, what the, your the point do. is. He would have fun because is that not a simple game? Or is Hotel Mario simple, Jim? Is it fun? Is it fun? Concept is simple. Is it fun? And fun. Is it okay? So I just won that one. So my point is, it has simple, fun games. Never disagree with that. Historical importance. Never disagreed. But do you want to be the guy that says the Abacus and the Steagles are overrated or underrated? I don't think you want to be that person. So. In my closing argument, worst arguments ever. The Atari Twenty Six Hundred, historically super important, but it's a little bit too. You ride the dick a little too hard with that one because in twenty thirty years, there ain't gonna be none, no more of you around. And while it laid the groundwork, there's better things out there. Twenty thirty years, no one's gonna hear about the NES either. Exactly. Where are my precious generous? Yeah, uh, NES will hang around. No, it won't. Because no, it won't. There's no doubt. And I'll say this on record, NES is better than the Atari. Because you actually have legit soundtracks. And you have better control. And you have stories and games you can play without manuals. All right, Shatner. So, I win. And as we close this, I do want to say I had to play the role of the person fighting an argument I don't believe. But that should show Jim lost again in the base because he can't keep his composure. One. And I just bring up better points, too. God. And he thinks he needs counter arguments three. <clears throat> so, Jim, with your raspberry pan- <laughs> with your raspberry pancake beer. <laughs> and for any of you, if you are listening, because we've actually noticed uh, iTunes, the downloads have been increasing, so we really appreciate it. If you're listening and you're wondering, try to watch this on YouTube because you can see some of our facial you can expressions. See lovely facial expressions. Um, oh, yeah. also, if you're listening on iTunes, please leave some kind of review on there. Yes. And because if you it, any, does, it does yeah. help it just in promotion and stuff like that. So if you enjoy it, it'll help us out. It takes two seconds to do. And, and on iTunes, honestly, no matter what your thought is, if you have a suggestion, something – because we're so focused on YouTube and the, the visual aspect, we want to know if the audio-wise is it okay with you guys, anything you suggest. And we know some of the older ones. Oof. Terrible. Fucking terrible. <laughs> Go past the first poor, 10 at least. As we said before, poor goddamn Dan, us doing those on the folding table and the, and the Yeti picking up everything. Yes. So we apologize. I'm going to actually, since Jim brought the beer and he's already had it, the raspberry pancake overall. Um, yeah. I mean, free will never has any major misses. It's surprisingly not as heavy because you hear the word pancake. I think you think it's going to sit like a fucking rock in your stomach. Um, you don't quite get all the flavors they mention here, No, but you know what? It's goddamn delicious. If you're lucky enough and you're near PA and you can grab one, do it. If I was going to throw a number out, I'd say it's like 3.5 out of 5. I think that's fair. And it's actually funny because having it now out of the can and I had it at the brewery itself out of a tap. Yeah. And when you have it out of the tap, it's way more like sedimentation. Like yeah. it is a thick, thick, like you're almost chewing the beer. Yeah. When this he one, talks about like, sedimentation, this is, there's like a little – there's a, a big chunk of sediment on the bottom, and I know there's no way your the camera's going to see it. But um, compared to Tired Hands, which is a beer we've reviewed multiple times on the site, that thing you'll have layers of of what's left over. This one, it's and not that bad. And I don't know if it's because you know maybe it sat out for a while, or whatever. Maybe it dissipated, but no, definitely out of a can. It's way more of an easier drink than it is off tap. Yeah, but and actually off tap. Like you don't get the raspberry until with the um the aftertaste, but out of a can, it's all kind of decently mixed together. Yeah, you still get the bitterness from any IPA at the back end of your throat, but it's not but like it's overpowering. Not, dude, it's not bad at all. Yeah, no, no this, this is a legit good beer. Um, so yeah, free will. Keep doing your good shit. Good work, boys. And for anyone, if you have any questions for us, we're available on every. I mean iTunes, YouTube, our website, Gmail, Instagram, Facebook, 
If you ever have a topic you want us to talk about or anything you want, any way you Bumble, want to reach, grinder. You know, Jim. <laughs> you try and be professional. We do, motherfucker. Since when? <laughs> Since when? <laughs> so, with that, guys, we appreciate everyone who's listening and watching, and cheers. Cheers. <laughs>